from our podcast last week, LastPass is acquiring a new feature because all the LastPass guys were listening to the podcast and my comment about how the um, the additional authentication employed by the grid, the, which is an optional um, additional factor in multi-factor authentication, how it was useful, but it was a little troubling to me that no one was, you know, that the, the grid could be learned over time. Mm. I mean, far-fetched, but possible. And they said, that's a good point. We're going to add a feature to send a person a reminder email when their grid has been used to a certain level, telling them that they ought to um, exchange it for a new one. So LastPass got a new feature as a consequence of wow. the podcast. You're a powerful man. Moving on to our uh, next question. Question three, a listener requesting anonymity in Boston, Mass. Mentions a LastPass vulnerability, he says, due to their password account recovery request system. Steve, thanks for the great LastPass review. If I leave my email account open or somebody knows my email password, then anyone with access to a PC where I have installed and used LastPass can break into my LastPass account. Actually, this is good for me to know because I, in fact, have LastPass on all my computers, and some of the computers, like the ones here in the studio, are left. You know, people can get into my system if I forget to log out. I lately have been doing that. By default, this preference uh, advanced option, so you go to preferences advanced, is selected. Quote, save a disabled one-time password locally for account recovery. At login, if an intruder selects, I forgot my password, help. He's taken to the account recovery page to activate your local one-time password and recover your account. The intruder enters my email address and then receives a message sent to my email account, and he gets the option to set a new LastPass master password for my account. I'll vouch for it. This does work. I've done this, actually. This is a weakness that could be resolved by changing the account recovery default to deselected in that preferences advanced area, as I've done manually. This option is presumably set to, set to assist all those people who forget their LastPass master password, but it's a real vulnerability which should be addressed. Um, okay, he's completely correct. And this is a feature which I didn't have a chance to cover last week among everything that we did cover. And so I wanted to bring it to all of our listeners' attention because it is absolutely the case that the LastPass folks cannot decrypt the data that they are share that, that that they are saving for us, storing for us. You you know using the 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 internet cloud to synchronize among multiple machines, which is the such, which is the cool thing about LastPass: the fact that it's it's so ubiquitous across platforms and devices. They, you know, if a user loses their password. It's over. I mean, there, there is no, they do, they do not have the password. They, you, we, you would not be able to log into their system because you need your password to, to create that hash, which is used as the login credential, nor could you ever again decrypt the data which has been stored. I mean, you're just completely out of luck. So at some point, I'm, sh I'm sure People had problems with this. Probably in, in the in the early days of LastPass, people, you know, contacted them and said, gee, I've really been liking your service. I've right. created passwords that I now haven't what? written down anywhere, um, but I've lost my, I forgot my pass, my master password for LastPass. I need you to tell me what it is. And so they said, uh, we don't know. I mean, that's the whole point is we don't know. TNO, baby. And so... So I'm sure they had a you know a skull session and did some brainstorming and said, look, um, we we have to have some solution for like optional for account recovery. And so what they came up with was sort of clever. They we talked about how you can create one-time passwords. You can if you know you're going to be roaming around and you don't have other means for doing multi-factor authentication so that using your username and password in a potentially hostile location 
might create a vulnerability, you can ask them to create some one-time passwords for you. They're annoyingly long, but you, that's good. You write them down on, in your wallet or whatever, and you sort of have them if you ever need to log in somewhere scary. So they said, okay, we can use that by creating a, by, for, for everybody by default, putting one of these on their, on the machines where they're using LastPass, and, but we'll have it disabled so that it, it can't be used until, until, our, and until our script enables it. So what they did was, and I've, I t- I've tested it during my getting to know you phase with LastPass, just, just as you had used it in the past, Leo, and it works very well. So you're able to tell them that I've, lo- I've forgotten my password. Now, other systems that people are familiar with where you lose your password, you know, they actually have your password. So they're able to, you know, they ask you some security questions or something, and then they reset your account with like a temporary password that allows you to log in and then you change it back to something that you want, which which means they have access to your data. Well, LastPass explicitly doesn't have access to your data. LastPass doesn't have the ability to give you a temporary password, except that they've pre-stored one if you've chosen this option, or I should say if you've not deselected the option, they've stored one on your machine. So... So um, the, this listener's point is correct. For the maximum security, you should go into the preferences, log in with the web browser, go into the preferences, and under advanced option, disable that um, one-time password stored locally, recognizing that doing so means... They can never help you. Nothing can help you. No, no force on earth can help you if you forget your master, if you forget or lose or somehow get confused with your master password. So I guess I would be a little more comfortable if this were disabled by default. On the other hand, if it were disabled by default and it's just the same as not having it because people who, you know, who forget their password would have no way of recovering themselves. So, I mean, this is a tricky one. Maybe I just they turn ought to, it off. I hope I don't forget my password. <laughs> yeah, maybe they <laughs> ought to, like, bring up a special dialogue when you're setting up your account and saying, okay, look, there's one, one softening of the absolute security here that we've come up with where – if somebody has access to your email system, I mean, and so, you know, you, you could see all the requirements that have to be lined up. They have right. to have access to the computer where these one-time password is stored. They have to have access to your email account, meaning they have to be able to, log, able to access that and log into it in order to receive the email at the registered email address where the LastPass folks send a link which is used to activate the otherwise, the normally disabled password. So, you know, they did everything they could to still protect us while giving us some way out. But the very fact that there is some way out creates a a theoretical potential vulnerability. So you can disable that, but then there is no way out. If you've lost your password, it's over. So now, it looks like it's on a it's a per machine basis because uh, it doesn't seem to save that setting across all the machines. So correct. you could turn it off per, on all the machines plug. except for one machine that you knew no one would ever get access to. For instance, exactly, yeah, exactly. And so, for example, yes, if you were if you had machines where you did not have full tight administrative control absolutely disable it there. So this is what I've done. I've turned it off on all the machines in the studio, but my home machine, I'm going to have one machine where I could, if I really got in trouble, save it. I think that's that's a very good policy. Okay. All right. That way you do have a way to recover if the worst happened. Yep. I just have done that. I like having the uh, USB key with the uh, multi-factor authentication. I think that's, instead of a YubiKey, I could have used a YubiKey, but this works quite nicely as well. Yeah, and it's, I mean, and you, you're you able to add it to an existing one. Right. And uh, the price is right because it's free. It's free. Yeah. Yep, yep. 